Hello, good day, God bless you. Wow, this is KHC 2020 Camp Meeting uh, Global Edition, and anybody and everybody can join us from any part of the world. I want us to get ready to receive from God like never before. Welcome to KHC Camp Meeting 2020 Global Edition. My name is Una Mr. God bless you. Glory, hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this is the day the Lord has made and will rejoice and be glad in Him. I want to thank God for this privilege and opportunity given to us by our friends, Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Dunamis and Sophia Okunowo for inviting us to be part of the guest ministers uh, that will minister this year camp meeting. We thank you so much for the relationship over the years, for how far God has helped us together. We celebrate God's grace upon your life and we thank God for what God has used you both to do in the body of Christ. We pray that God Almighty will reward you abundantly even as you labor more in that which God has committed into your head. Thank you one more time, Pastor Dunamis and Pastor Mrs. Sophia Okuno for this real opportunity to minister on this year camp meeting of Kisses and All Club. Thank you very much and I bless you. Now quickly as we go into God's word tonight, I want to talk about an aspect that is very important considering the, the theme for this year camp meeting, two shall be one, two shall be one. is an aspect I feel is very important if that vision of two becoming one is going to be possible. So I want to look at uh, handling conflict in marriage. How do we handle conflict in marriage? Now don't forget that uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, God said the man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Now, the primary purpose why the man will have to leave and why the man will have to cleave to his wife is because uh, without the living, there's no way they can cleave to become one flesh. So the primary purpose for why the man will leave his father, will leave his mother, will cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh is because God want them to be one. I've said it over the years that one plus one is not always two with God. That is why when it comes to the mathematics and the arrangements of the kingdom, one plus one is not always two with God. In the context of this scripture, God says one plus one is going to be one. So how do we achieve this vision? How do we bring this vision to come to pass in the life of couples? How do we have couples over the years who are married and they have one flesh, one flesh in their reasoning, one flesh in their thinking, one flesh in their taking and the making of decision. So there's an aspect I want us to look at in the course of this teaching tonight, which is very important and crucial when it comes to the pursuit of that vision of two becoming one, and which is an aspect of how do we handle conflict in marriage. Because, see, if you don't know how to handle conflict in marriage, there is a high tendency that the fulfillment of that vision of two becoming one flesh will not be possible. So for that vision to come to pass in your life, in my life, in your marriage, in my marriage, there is a need for you and I to know how to handle conflict. I'd like you to understand that conflict are major part of life. Conflict are major part of life. And since they are major parts of life, that means they are part of our marriages. There's nothing you can do about the coming of conflict, but you must know how to manage it. You must know how how to undo it. That's just the reality. Our inability to undo conflict is what results to crisis. Our inability to undo crisis is what results to crisis. Crises are not conflicts. I like to establish that, uh, that conflict and crisis are not the same thing. They are two different things. But you see, your inability, my inability to handle, to handle a uh, 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 crisis, uh, or sorry, conflict when they arise, uh, is what result into what crisis, is what result into crisis. Crisis are not conflict. Uh, when conflicts are not properly handled well in marriage, 
it degenerates into crisis uh, and it is crisis that leads to separation uh, or divorce. Over the years, our pastor, Dr. Albert Femi Duol, have said this, uh, that people don't divorce uh, because they hate each other. They divorce well because they are old. And most of the time, this old is as a result of accumulated issues uh, that are unresolved, accumulated issues uh, that they slept over, accumulated issues uh, that they refuse uh, to talk about. So it's important for you to know that crises uh, are not conflict, uh, conflict are not crisis. Uh, when conflicts are not properly handled within the context text of marriage, it degenerates into crisis and it is crisis that leads to either separation or either divorce. We need to learn how to handle conflict in our marriages, hence the need for you to enroll yourself into the wisdom school of conflict management and not crisis management. I'll say that again, there is a need for you and I to know how to handle conflict in our marriages, hence the need for you to enroll yourself into the wisdom school of conflict management and not crisis management. Never let the issues in your marriage get to the point of crisis, never. You must do everything as a man, you must do everything as a woman, even if an aspiring uh, uh, husband to be, aspiring wife to be, uh, you must make up your mind before you get into that marriage uh, that you will do everything, uh, that issues that will arise in your marriage uh, will not get to the point of crisis. Issues are going to arise between couples. That's the reality of life. Issues uh, are going to arise. Uh, maybe you're about to take a decision uh, about the place to live, uh, about the place to settle, about the place to buy the property, about the place to build your house, uh, about the kind of schools that uh, you want your children to attend, uh, about the kind of life you want to live for yourself, uh, even about the kind of place of worship. Issues are going to arise uh, between couples, uh, but never allow those issues to grow into crisis. You know why? It is crises that degenerate into separation uh, or divorce. And that is why over the years I've counseled several couples, uh, even in the course of their counseling session before their wedding, uh, I tell them uh, you have to do everything uh, to make sure that your crisis uh, does not degenerate uh, into separation uh, or into divorce. Uh, Always talk about the issues arising in your marriage. Never cover up things. You must learn to talk. Uh, a good marriage uh, is a marriage that involves good talkers. You must learn to talk. Uh, you must never allow your temperament, uh, whether you're an introvert, an extrovert, you're melancholy, you're sanguine, uh, you're phlegmatic, uh, you're choleric, uh, to come in between uh, the communication line between you and your spouse. Uh, you must learn uh, to always talk. You must learn uh, to always talk. Uh, any marriage you see that is working today is a marriage that involves two talkers, uh, two people that know how to talk, uh, talk about what? Talk about anything. Two people uh, that know how to talk, uh, talk about what? Uh, talk about anything. So you must learn uh, how to talk. In fact, the first thing you must learn uh, how to do, uh, in what to you prepare to get married uh, or to get to that, even if you're married, uh, is to know how to talk is to know how to talk. Talk if you don't want your marriage uh, to end up in crisis. Uh, talk uh, if you don't want your marriage uh, to end up in crisis uh, that you won't be able to handle. Please talk. Please talk. Make sure you learn how to talk. Amen to Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Isaiah said, uh, learn to do well, seek job, uh, relieve the oppressed. Isaiah chapter 1 uh, verse 17. Uh, said, learn to do well, seek job, uh, release the oppressor, uh, judge the fatherless, uh, plead for the widow. There is nothing you put your heart to learn uh, that you cannot learn. You can learn to be a good talker. You can learn to be a good husband to your wife. You can learn to be a good wife to your husband. You can learn to be a good father to your children. You can learn to be a good mother to your children. You can learn to be a good in-laws to your to your to your to your I mean to your in-laws, a son in law or a daughter in law. You can learn to be a good protege, you know. Amen to Jesus Christ up your mentor. You can learn to be a good member to the church where you worship. There is nothing you put your heart to learn that you cannot learn. You can learn how to dress well. You can learn how to talk well. You can learn how to carry yourself well in public. You can learn how to handle issues of life well. There is nothing that you put your heart to learn that you cannot learn. 
Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says that a wise man will hear and will increase in learning and a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. So in life, there is nothing you and I put our heart to learn that we cannot learn. And that also brought down to the issue of what we are discussing today as, as a requirement that you and I need to develop in order for two people or two persons to become one flesh because that is the idea of God for marriage. That's the plan of God. Uh, when God said that a man uh, will leave his father, will leave his mother, will come together to cleave with his wife, uh, and they will become one flesh. One flesh both in body, one flesh in spirit, uh, and one flesh in soul. And it's possible for this to happen uh, in our marriages uh, if we know how to handle and also how to manage uh, conflict that arises uh, in our marriage. So Isaiah chapter 1 uh, verse 17 says, uh, learn to do well. So there's nothing you put your heart to learn, child of God, that you cannot what learn. Meaning, like I said earlier on, there is nothing we put our heart to learn that we cannot learn. Being a good father, being a good mother, being a good husband, being a good wife, all begins by learning how to handle conflict in our marriages. Because conflicts are part of life. You can stop them from happening, but you can control, you can manage the effect upon your marriage. I'm going to say that again. You can stop them from coming to your manager, but you can control, you can manage their effect, you can manage their impact upon your marriage. So the question now is this, what then is conflict? What then is conflict? Conflict is the open, hostile opposition occurring as a result of differing viewpoints. We cannot always think the same way. You must understand that, that two people that are coming together to become one flesh are coming from two different backgrounds. Two different backgrounds, uh, and these backgrounds over these years have shaped their opinion. This background over the years uh, have shaped the way they think. Uh, this background over the years have shaped their, shaped their thought pattern and their belief system. So there is a tendency that yourself and your spouse, uh, yourself and your wife, uh, yourself and your husband uh, cannot think in the same direction. But the same, it is maturity that comes in uh, that even though you've got different opinion, uh, you've got uh, different viewpoints, uh, you can still come together, you can still converge at a point without issues, without conflict or crisis, or without crisis rather, without crisis arising. Never confuse conflict as crisis. They are never the same. Crisis is what happens when conflict in marriage are not tame at the very early stage. Crisis is what happens when, when, when conflict that arises in our marriage are not tame at the very early stage. Conflict is the open, hostile opposition occurring as a result of what are different views, different views, or what I call that differing viewpoint. Amen to Jesus Christ. And you must understand this. What I want to say is very important because over the years, I've seen people compare their marriage with somebody else's marriage. And don't forget, Paul said that they that compare themselves with one another are not wise. Now, you must understand this. There's no marriage relationship that is immune to potential conflict from arising. No matter where you've been married, whether you just got married last weekend, or you've been married for one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, 14 years ago, or you just celebrated a 20 year wedding anniversary. The truth is that there's no marriage on earth, amen, that is immune to potential conflict from arising. Now, one of the reasons why this conflict arises in marriages is because the focus is always on self. Don't forget that our aim according to God's mandate for marriage, is that two shall become one flesh. Two shall become one flesh. And one of the ways we can achieve this vision of God in our marriages here on earth, because marriage is not your idea. Marriage is not my idea. Marriage is not even the first man that got married was Adam. Marriage wasn't his idea. Adam was okay with all the animals in the kind of Eden. Adam was cool. Every cool of the day, God coming around to fellowship with him. Adam was okay because Adam has dominion. Adam was absolutely in charge of everything that God created. Don't forget that the same Adam was the one that gave name to all the animals that we have up to today. 
So Adam was okay. But one of those days that God will come to him in the cool of the day, God now realized or God now discover it is not good for this man Adam to be alone. There is a need for us to prepare him and help me that, that will stand in him in the pursuit of the vision to dress and to keep the garden. So the idea of marriage wasn't Adam's idea. And that's why I tell people, I said, the devil cannot attack marriages. The devil cannot succeed in attacking marriage as well because marriage is never Satan's idea. And whatever is God's idea becomes God's responsibility. Whatever is God's idea becomes God's, God, 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 God's will. And God's will is always God's will. So the idea that God has in mind when God provided Eve for Adam is that both of them shall become one flesh. Both of them shall become one flesh. And you see, one of the reasons why this vision can be impossible to attain in our life is when the people involved cannot manage and handle conflict within the context of scripture. Amen to Jesus Christ. So, the reason most times why conflict arises is because the focus is always on self. The focus is always on self has always been the causes uh, to all of conflict in marriage. Once we can discipline, so also the ones we are, once we are disciplined enough uh, to take away silver uh, from the marriage institution, uh, then uh, we will reduce the potentiality of conflict uh, arising in our marriages. The pastors will face it, don't get it deceived. <laughs> and the bishop will face it, the apostle will face it. Your believer does not, uh, does not, does not, does not free you uh, uh, from you, from your marriages, uh, being confronted by conflict, and that's why I said that there is no marriage relationship on earth that is immune to conflict. The conflict will come, but you have a responsibility to know how to undo it, to know how to control it, uh, so that uh, the effect and the impact will not affect your marriage, will not affect your marriage. And over the world today, you will see the devil fighting different kinds of marriages. And the reason is because uh, the devil does not fight what he does not fear. The devil knows that the plan of God uh, for every marriage institution uh, is for the two people involved uh, to be one flesh. Not to be four, not to be six, but to be one flesh. Because uh, in, in, in God's agenda, one plus one is not always two. One plus one is not always three. One plus one is not always four. One plus one with God is always one. He said one which is a thousand. He said two which is ten thousand. Now, which means that the two, they've joined synergy together. They've joined energy together. They've joined forces together to do more than what one person will have done. Amen to Jesus Christ. Notice tears of conflict in marriage like self-centeredness. Like self-centeredness and selfishness. The me, myself, and I syndrome. This one thing uh, couples must learn to kill. Couples must learn uh, to kill the me, myself, and the I syndrome. My idea, my right. When it comes to marriage, nobody has an idea. Most man's idea is for both of you. Nobody has a right. The day you get married, uh, that's the day your right ended. The day you say, yes, I do, uh, that's the day your right ended. My feeling alone. Is what matters in this room. No, no, it's not about your feeling alone. You know, you've got to consider your spouses, you got to consider the other person's feelings. When you think like this, your brain of conflict, and if it's not properly handled, it can lead to crises in that marriage. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, Can two work together except they be in agreement? It takes, it takes, it takes, it takes two becoming one because one talks about owners. Yeah, one talks about owners, and owners talks about agreement. Amen to Jesus Christ. So it takes two working together for them, I got to me, to be in agreement. James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you, come they not, ends even of your laws that war in your members. Nobody has a right in a marriage relationship. You both have equal right to hear your views and feelings. Now, these are some bitter truth some African men may not love. Amen? It's bitter, but see, when you take it, it becomes sweet. That, you see, in the marriage, in the context of God, you would have equal right to hear your views and feelings. 
It's not about you. It's about us. It's not about you. It's about us. Because the day we cleave together, we have become one. Amen? So the, the issue of saying me, I, myself, it's dead. So the language has not changed from I to us. From me to us. So quickly let's look at some positive and negative result of conflict in marriage. When they're not properly handled well. And when they're properly handled well, let's look at the positive impact it makes on our marriages. Now let's start with the negative result. Number one, conflict sometimes causes us to dwell and magnify the fault and weaknesses in our spouses. When they're not properly handled well, it, 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 it causes us to dwell and magnify the fault and weaknesses in our spouses. Number two, conflict can cause or create division within a marriage relationship. When the focus is on I, myself, and not us, then it can cause or create division within a marriage relationship. Once the focus is not on us, once the focus is on I, it's my money, it's my car, it's my property, it's my children, or they're my children, then uh, there will be water division in that marriage. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, can three, two work together except they be in agreement? Energies that you're supposed to use to build life together, you waste it on unproductive activities. That's what conflict does. Your attention is divided. Energies are divided. The energies that both of you, you are meant to build life together, to build your children together, to build your home together, to build your career together, to build ministry together. Such energies, so such energies are, are divided into two. And you begin, you begin to, 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 to expand that energies on unproductive water activities. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 to 10 says, But now you also put off all this anger. Anger, these things can cause conflict. Anger, rot, malice. It's amazing. You see couples keep malice. Keep malice for days. I wonder how they do it. Keep malice for week. Keep malice for months. They communicate by writing down. What will you take for dinner? I will take rice and stew. What do you take for breakfast? I am not and fasting today. Who will pick the kids from the school? I don't know. You can read that way. You are also their father. And they, they communicate by writing. Why? Because they are keeping malice. And such couples still expect God to hear them when they pray to God. One of the strongest and most powerful forms of prayer is the prayer of agreement. Particularly the one prayed by couples, husband and wife. The Bible says, if two officials agree on earth as touching anything we ask, her, it shall be done unto you of our Father who is in heaven that our joy might be full. Your joy can only be full if there is water, a synergy. Your joy can only be full if there is water, a unity of purpose between yourself and your wife, yourself and your husband. And that is why you must do everything to eliminate malice. The tendency is the temptation will come up where you must keep talking. Because any marriage you see working today are marriages that involve two talkative, two good talkers. Praise the Lord. So, Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. But now you also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lying on one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created you. So, what are the positive results of conflicts when they are properly undoed? and manage well. Don't forget I said to us at the beginning that conflict and crisis are not the same thing. It is when conflicts are not properly undo, not properly managed, that degenerate into crisis. And when this crisis, I get to me, arises, that is what leads to separation or divorce. Don't also forget that people don't divorce not because they hate themselves, they divorce why? because they are hurt. They are hot one because they've got things bottled up. They've got things accumulated in them over the years that the chances and the opportunity to talk about it never arise in that marriage. 
And that is why every couple, you must make sure you talk about anything, everything at any time. You must make sure you don't sweep things under the carpet. Because see, when you sweep issues under the carpet, uh, these are issues uh, that lead to crisis. You must make sure you talk about it. I get me. Once you talk about it, it's like 70% soft. Praise the Lord. Then you cannot have other ingredients like, like, you know, counseling, like prayer and the likes of them. Praise the Lord. So what are the positive effects, you know, when conflicts are properly managed? And, and number one, conflicts can lead to growth and maturity in a marital relationship. If handled properly, it can lead to growth. Once you notice an aspect of your life, it can challenge you and push you to that place of growth. Once you notice you've got anger problem, uh, once you notice you're intolerant, uh, once you notice uh, that you are you're, 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 you're easily given to malice, I guess you mean, and you know these things are not scriptural. You know these things, if these things are active in your marriage, uh, it, will, it, will, it will prevent that vision of God that two shall become one flesh. Don't forget that uh, all of this we're saying is all about the vision of God. One, sorry, two becoming one flesh. Amen. And I said to us that most times, uh, this vision of two becoming one uh, is not always possible and visible. Not that it's not that it can be possible. It's not always possible uh, because uh, of conflict that we don't know how to manage uh, or undo when they arise uh, in our in, in, in our marriage relationship. So conflict can lead to growth and maturity. That's why you don't you don't cover it up. It can push you to the place of growth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, if properly handled well. Conflicts are part of the challenges that comes in marriage that puts demand for growth on us. Amen. Some of us in, in, in our marriages, it is the times of conflict that, that we grow more spiritually, that we run to God to consult what the mind of God is uh, concerning these challenges uh, that is confronting my family, confronting my spouse, uh, or confronting you know, my children. Pushes us to the place of praying, to the place of fasting. Jesus Christ said, I'll be this kind of great not order except by prayer and by fasting. Amen. Maybe there's some financial challenge in the family that is recurring. It happened last year. It's happening again this year. You see, that's a conflict. That's a financial conflict. That can push you, you know, to expose your mind to knowledge. To expose your mind uh, to reading books uh, that addresses that issue that you guys are facing in your marriage. And that is why you don't run away from conflict. You don't sweep it under the carpet. You, 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 you attack it headlong. Amen to Jesus Christ. So conflict are part of the challenges uh, that comes in marriage uh, that puts the demand for growth on us. And you see how you react to a marital conflict will determine whether you're ready for growth or not. How you react, amen? Reaction is very important. How you react uh, to a marital conflict uh, will determine uh, whether you're ready for growth uh, or not. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, uh, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens uh, the contenance of his friend. Over the years, uh, myself and my good, wonderful friend, uh, Pastor Dynamis Okunawa, we've, we've enjoyed this in our relationship. We've compared notes together. Anytime we come around, uh, we discuss issues uh, that affect our destiny. We discuss issues uh, that affect our ministry. We compare notes to one another. I, I look into what he's doing now uh, and what God is doing in his life uh, that I can't learn from. Uh, he also looked what I'm doing now uh, and, and what God is doing in our life and ministry that he can also learn from. So you must not uh, trade away the place of relationship, uh, even in conflict management. Because the Bible says that iron sharpened iron, uh, so a man uh, sharpens uh, the countenance uh, of his friend. Number two, positive effect uh, of when conflict are properly managed and handled uh, in a marriage relationship is a conflict that we always reveal the need for us to change. That is it. We always reveal the need for us to, to change. Conflict is a revealer of your real temperament. You can hide yourself from everybody. You can hide yourself from anything, but you can't hide yourself from conflict. Conflict is a revealer of temperament. 
If you are choleric, it will reveal you. If you are sanguine, it will reveal you. If you are melancholy, it will reveal you. If you are, if you are, if you are, if you are phlegmatic, it will reveal you. If you are introvert, it will reveal you. If you are extrovert, it will reveal you. Conflict is a revealer of our new self. A revealer of our new self. When Jesus Christ was taken, and Jesus Christ was in the garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, we saw how the conflict that was on the ground revealed the true natures of those disciples. Not once, not twice, that Jesus went to meet them and he found them sleeping. And he said to them, can't you guys just study one hour with me in the place of prayer? Amen. The, the crisis on ground revealed their temperament, revealed their personality. Amen to Jesus Christ. Nothing reveals who we are in the real sense, like conflicts. Like conflict, uh, and that's why they always say that it's a character like smoke. You can't hide it for so long. You can't hide it for so long. You can't hide it. Uh. It will reveal your true self. Uh. It will reveal your true nature. Amen to Jesus Christ. Proverbs 18, verse 15. Uh, the art of the proven, the prudent ladder, I beg your pardon, gets knowledge uh, and the hear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Seeketh knowledge. Number three, as I run quickly, conflict help us become tolerant uh, to opposing views. You cannot always be right, even in the marriage relationship. You cannot always be right, and you cannot always be wrong. It's a two-way side. Amen to Jesus Christ. Two conflict uh, help us to become tolerant. Uh, if your marriage uh, is going to succeed, uh, if you're going to both end up becoming one flesh as God has proposed, uh, you must learn how to be tolerant uh, to your spouse's view. You must learn how to be tolerant. Don't forget that uh, both of you are coming from different backgrounds. You are coming. Maybe your wife came from a polygamous home. You came from a nuclear home. Of course, the way you are both brought up are different. So you must learn to tolerate people's view, even in the context of marriage. Now, quickly, let's look at some method on how we can deal with conflict when they arise. Number one, don't avoid conflict by retreating from it. Don't cover it or face it at long. Number two, don't attempt to avoid conflict by circumventing the major issues and focusing on minor points. Focus rather on the major issues that has triggered up that conflict. Don't try to circumvent. Don't try to sweep things under the carpet. You're not picking small, small things that does not carry with. No, no. Focus on the major issues, on what has triggered up that conflict. Number three, quickly, don't attempt to avoid conflict by dealing with side issue. By dealing with side issue, talk about the main issues that trigger up the conflict. Don't be hypocritical about issues. Don't refer back to something that I've been talked about, that I've been said to. Don't say things like this, I've been telling you, that's how I used to behave. That's how I used to behave. No, 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 no. Such things does not control conflict. Such normal conflict, rather they pour more fire. Rather they, they trigger it up the more. Always take responsibility of your action and don't and never play the blame game. Don't and never play the, 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 the blame game. Number four, identify the real issues and see how you can both work out your way through them to a satisfactory solution. Identify the real issues and see how you can both work out your way through to a satisfactory solution. The real solution if you can both talk about the issue. That is one thing I've learned personally in my marriage over the years. There is a solution. Don't let anybody deceive you there is no solution. Don't let anybody make you feel bad that this is an impossible situation. If only you can both decide to talk through any matter, any issues that arise, there will always be a solution. Now quickly, let me give you some golden rules for dealing with conflict in marriage. Some golden rules for dealing with conflict in marriage. Number one, attack the problem and not the person. Never make the mistake of attacking the person. Never make the mistake of attacking the personality of your spouse or using a weakness or his weakness as an issue. No, attack the problem, not the person. Learn to always separate issues from personality. Learn to always separate issues from personality. Attack the issue, not a person or a person. She is not perfect, neither are you perfect also. She is not perfect, neither are you perfect also. Deal with issues and not person. Number two, golden rule, verbalize your feeling, but never react with violence or abuse. I need to say this, verbalize your feeling, 
but never react in violence or abuse. Never en encourage verbal abuse in your relationship with your spouse. We only talk about, about violent abuser, but we don't talk more about verbal abuse. There is a way somebody can talk and you want to go and jump into terminal bridge. Praise God. Words are powerful. Let every word you use to each other always paint the picture of hope in your marriage. No matter how bad things are, no matter how bad the situation are, always make sure you use words that always paint the picture of hope in your marriage. The picture of where you both see yourself getting to. The picture of the kind of life you want to live together even after the children, they've all gotten married, they've all gone to start their own life and you are both left alone. Always speak words that paint that picture of hope in your marriage. Don't use deliberate words on each other. Rather use words that complement one another. Don't use deliberate words, but use words that complement one another. Always use the right words to verbalize your feeling. Don't forget Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 6. Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your Lord. Let not the sun go down upon your Lord. Number 3. Forgive instead of judging or condemning one another. I'd like you to understand that true love always forgive. No matter the weight of the sin, no matter the weight of the accusation, true love always forgive. Learn to forgive before offenses arrive. I think I learned that one from my pastor, Dr. Alma Femi Uduwale. He said he has a principle that before you offend him, he has forgiven you. So you also can learn as you have also learned from him. Learn to forgive before offense arrives. Forgiveness is not easy without the help of the Holy Spirit. That is why you need the Holy Spirit in your life so that forgiveness of forgiving people can be easy. Romans 5, verse 5. And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 to 38. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, check it together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. But with the same measure, know that word, because oftentimes we are always quicker to quote good measure. Press down, check it together, running over. We don't read the right part that with the same measure that you met out of his word, you will get back. Amen to Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be you kind one to another. Tender added, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake and forgiving you. Number four, golden rule. Be committed to give more love than you want to take from your partner. Learn to sacrifice for one another. Learn to sacrifice for each other. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I have shown you all things up. How that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Number five, golden rules when it comes to handling conflict that in order for two to become one. The love for your spouse should be genuine and not pretense. Your love for your spouse should be genuine and not pretense. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. Let the love be without discrimination above that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be, kind, be, be, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I believe I've been able to be a blessing to us in this broadcast and also in this year, Can Meeting 2020 organized by Kisses and Ox Club International. I trust God that you've been blessed by God's word. Don't forget what God's word says that you are cleansed by the words which I speak to you. Quickly, I want to take time out to pray for some set of people that are watching me in this broadcast. Maybe your marriage, maybe your home has been going through conflict and you've been wondering, are we going to come out of this conflict? I want to pray for you today, even as you listen to me and you say amen, that God will supply the strength for you to know what to do to handle that conflict in the name of Jesus. And I'll speak against every shaky home here. 
I speak against every shaky marriage here. I speak that Satan, you are the one who is responsible for the negativity of So therefore, I command you to remove your hand from that home, remove your hand from that marriage in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are watching me and you're having a child that's giving you a problem. I speak life to that child. I speak right now to his mind, to his soul, that that child will get back himself to the way God has ordained it in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit responsible for that misbehavior. I curse you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, finally, I pray for every Oma that is watching me in this broadcast, uh, be represented. Uh, I speak the shalom of God. Uh, there shall be nothing missing, uh, there shall be nothing broken uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I take this time out also to pray for Kisses and Order International Club. I pray that, Lord, uh, you will expand their reach globally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. I pray, Lord, for our host pastors, uh, Pastor Duna Meza and Sophia O'Connor, where you have given us vision to them. Uh, I pray that this vision uh, will continue to grow. This vision will continue to grow. This vision, Elegabaha, Menokusha, Enge Begaba, Baruke, Elegiza, Ando Kopa, Liki Takaha. There is a woman watching me right now. You're about to take a decision based on what people told you that will affect your own. The Lord God said to tell you this there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the end is to destruction. If only you can entrust that situation into my arm, I will give you wisdom. I will give you knowledge as I've given you in this broadcast uh, to know what to do to handle that situation. Father, I pray for that woman uh, that holds this water uh, watching me in this broadcast. Uh, I pray for wisdom for you to know what to do in the name of Jesus. Uh, the strength and the grace to deploy what you learned in this broadcast uh, tonight is given to you now in the name of Jesus. And I cause the devil to remove his arm off your own and your marriage uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, I give you praise. I pray for every intending couple who are planning to settle down. I pray God Almighty, all they need to settle down, Father, release it to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. God bless you. Amen to Jesus. We'd like you to partner with us in Cases in Us Club. Uh, to do so, kindly use the banking information you see on the screen. And for international gifts, please navigate to the URL you see on the screen at kissesandnotes.com slash give. God bless you as you do so. Books are available on Amazon and on Kata Books. In order to access the books, kindly navigate to the URL you see on the screen at kissesandnotes.com slash books. If you live in the city of Ibadan, we'd like you to watch with us at Shouts of Grace Center. It's at Joker Plaza, beside Trans Amusement Park, Odita, UI Road, in the city of Ibad. On Sundays, we have two services by 7.30 and 9 o'clock, and by Wednesdays, 6 p.m. It will be our pleasure to have you. Kindly follow us on Cases and Us Club at casesandus.com. You have a lot of resources for your soul.